morning. I'm Reverend Dr. Candy Ashenden, and we have a special treat for you this morning. Our intern, Cindy LaJoy, will be offering us this special Mother's Day message, and I invite you to join us as we celebrate Mother's Day together. Please join us in a call to worship. In you, O oh God, every family on earth receives its name. Illumine our homes with the light of your love. We thank you for gifts of love we have received from our mothers. And from those who have served as mothers in many ways, nourishing us and guiding us as we grow to be who we are. As we have been loved by them, so we are loved by you, O oh God. Join us in this day of celebration as we rejoice in being loved. Jan Morrow. We gather together to worship our loving, nurturing God, who, like a mother, knows us intimately, loves us unconditionally, teaches us the way we should go, and comforts us in times of need. We praise God, the source and sustainer of life. Amen.
Our mother, which art the earth, nurturing are their ways. Thy web of life be woven, thy way be found within as it is all around. Thank you this day for our daily bread and sweat and forgive us our misuse of you as we forgive others their misuse of you of us. And lead us not into exploitation, but deliver us from lording it over you and over each other and over all our other fellow creatures. For thine are the waters of life, the hills, valleys, and plains of home, the breeding, seeding, feeding ground, for now and for as close to forever as we will ever come. Ah, woman, our father, mother, who are in the world and surpass the world, blessed be thy presence in us, in animals and flowers, in still air and wind. May justice and peace dwell among us as you come to us. Your will be our will. Your will that we be sisters and brothers as bread is bread, water is itself, for our hunger, for our quenching of thirst. Forgive us, we walk crookedly in the world, our perverse and fail our pro of our promise, but we would be human if only you consent to stir up our hearts. Amen. Good morning. We have three different scripture passages this morning that I'd like to share with you. First one is Isaiah 49, verses 14 through 15. But Zion said, The Lord has forsaken me. My Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her nursing child or show no compassion for the child of her womb? Even these may forget, yet I will not forget you. Our second scripture passage is Psalm 127, verse 3. Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. And our final passage this morning is Isaiah chapter 66, verse 13. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. For weeks, a six-year-old little boy was sharing with his kindergarten teacher with great excitement that he was expecting a baby brother or baby sister. And then his mom eventually allowed him to feel the baby move in, his, in her tummy. The next week he went back to school and his teacher asked, because he had been silent about this for a little bit, what's up with your baby brother or sister? And he started crying and said, I think my mommy ate her. With several other countries also having days that commemorate and honor their mothers, it seems like this bridges all cultures, this celebration of motherhood. But not every mom is tender and loving. Heck, not every mom even wants to be a mother. Some women find themselves in the situation of being pregnant and never desired having a child. And not every mother-child relationship is terrific with respectful children either. It's difficult. Just as Christmas often brings about great depression for many people because of loneliness, and feeling uncared for in the world, Mother's Day can stir an awful lot of feelings. It can bring about feelings of recognition of the inadequacy of our relationships that the world tells us ought to be perfect, tender, gentle. We have a sense of what mother-child relationships in the ideal world should look like. And so often it doesn't live into that, leaving us all feeling like everything's a little bit lacking. In Psalm 127, we are told by the psalmist that children are a heritage from the Lord and the fruit of the womb is a reward. While this may indeed be true, it certainly isn't always how many pregnant women may always feel. Unfortunately, some find themselves pregnant under very difficult or even dangerous circumstances. Finances may mean that the burden of a child will overwhelm some, or perhaps the young woman is not in the kind of relationship she knows will be encouraging and supportive of the birth of a child. Many women do not view news of an impending birth to be at all the kind of fruit that is a reward, but instead it can be a very bitter, sour fruit and they wish they could just avoid it all. Not all women are born with mothering instincts and sometimes they simply don't have the desire to be a mom. The idea that all children will be greeted with enthusiasm and joy is simply false. And it's probably been that that notion has been false throughout time. We wish it were so, but sadly it is not. But we do wish it for every child. 
We wish that every child were born into a family that was anxiously and joyously awaiting their arrival. We wish that every child was loved and nurtured in the ways that they need, given everything to help them thrive. But it just isn't so. It doesn't always happen that way. In our scripture passage for today, we are reminded that yes, not every child is born into the ideal. The question is posed, can a woman forget her nursing child or show no compassion for the child of her womb? Well, as the mother of five orphans, three of whom were abandoned, I can indeed assert unequivocally that yes, moms can forget their nursing children. And yes, there are mothers who apparently have little compassion for their kids. As an adoptive mom, I may not be able to claim that my beloved sons and daughters are the fruit of my own womb, but they are indeed the heritage of my heart. As I have spent the past 20 years mothering the fruits from another woman, I have delighted in those sweet fruits from another woman. Those sweet fruits that for me are the very essence of who I am as a mom, and yet for some mothers would have been that bitter, sour fruit. But whether we were abandoned behind an apartment building in 20 below weather as our son Josh was, or whether we merely have a, just a contentious relationship with our mom, no matter how hard we try, we need to move on in our scripture passage to the statement that reminds us again, even these may forget, yet I will not forget you. God stresses over and over again throughout the Bible that we are never alone, that we are not forgotten in that we are never abandoned by God. God is always present to us. God is always celebrating with us our successes, even if our earthly parents aren't as excited about the things that we accomplish in the world. And God will always lift us up when we falter. Our human parents may be less than we might hope, but thankfully we can find all we need in the spirit of the living water which nurtures us far better than any human ever could. Maybe we scored the jackpot though. Maybe we ended up with a terrific mom who's no longer with us and we ache to hear her sweet voice again or to taste her homemade dinner rolls or to feel her hand rest gently on our back. Perhaps our men memories of her conjure up her laughter and her playful spirit or we can sense her gently nudging us toward making better decisions in our life. When the relationship was all that it could have been, and when it's ripped from us by death or maybe even dementia, we long for our mother's presence and the security we felt knowing she was always there and always in our corner. It is quite interesting that the masculine side of God is the one most people identify with. And yet again in Isaiah, we are reminded in chapter 66, verse 13, that as a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. The mothering qualities of God are described throughout scripture. And yet, while it's all well and good that God loves us and God can be a mothering figure in our lives, how do we actually feel the presence so the holes in our heart can be filled? Whether our gaping wounds exist because mom was not all she wished she had been, we wish she had been, or because she is no longer physically or mentally present with us, the wound definitely needs healing. No matter how old we are, even as adults, we still need our boo-boos metaphorically kissed. We need mercurochrome applied and our confidence reinvigorated in the ways that only a mother or a mother figure can do for us. As I consider this question, I can't help but think of the temporary mothers all five of my children had when they were young. For example, as I stood in the foyer of my son Matt's orphanage when we went to adopt him, and it was Mother's Day 2000. His main caretaker simply couldn't contain her sobs as she wrapped him up and enveloped him closely. And it was so obvious that whether he had been the fruit of her womb or not, she was a mother and she kept his light burning until we could get there to be his permanent forever parents. This was important. It was life-changing for my son who at 11 months old had suffered rickets and was 14 pounds. 
He would eventually need spinal fusion surgery because of the malnutrition. But the most important thing was his soul was being nurtured every moment by this particular woman who adored him and gently and lovingly placed him in my arms. And you could tell that this was going to be an incredible loss for her. All of us have temporary mothers in our lives. Many of us have them from friends and other women that are in our life who nurture us and protect us. Temporary mothers matter. They're important and they fill the gap and they are God's way of showing up for us when humans fail. But sometimes the kind of mother love we need, need is tough love. Sometimes it's not the tender and gentle version of a mother that's what we actually need in our life at the moment. I'll never forget another temporary mother that one of my daughters had in an orphanage that she was in. And as I asked her who her favorite caretaker was, she pointed to the exact opposite person I thought she would select. It was a tough, strong Russian woman who she said was her favorite. And I had expected her to, pay, to select the softer, tender Asian woman, the ethnic Kazakh caretaker that was in her orphanage. Instead, she told me through an interpreter, I like that one because she doesn't take any nonsense off anybody. In other words, this mother, this temporary mother, knew my daughter would try and push buttons. And my daughter wanted the one who had put the guardrails up to keep her safe and to keep her on track. Even at 11 years old, she had the common sense to understand, I need a little tougher mom. It's also the moment when I knew, oh, that girl ended up with the right mom in me because I'm a kind of no-nonsense kind of mom. And so I knew then in that moment instantly that I was probably going to be pretty successful with my daughter, Angela. When you think about it, we need different mothers at different stages in our life. Sometimes our moms have no experience with the direction in life that we're headed and they can't help us or mother us through that process. Other times our mothers are failing and we need to have a mothering presence for us as we nurture our moms. I've been fortunate enough to have many different mothers, but one in particular stands out as I'm sharing with you today. Her name is Jane Nanestead. I literally met Jane the first day that we arrived at church with our son who had been newly adopted, Kenny. Kenny is from Bishkek, Kyrgyzstan. And this was Jane and Steve, her husband, first time visiting our church. Little did either one of us know or understand how deep our relationship would, would grow over time as we introduced ourselves and our slightly feral child, Kenny. <laughs> Kids coming home from orphanages don't behave the way most normal children behave. Jane has stood by me through more than I could possibly share with you. Jane herself is not a mother, and yet she is. Jane has mothered numerous people throughout her life. I've heard stories of young people that she nurtured on the job, and she certainly mothered me in all kinds of ways. As I went from being a new mom to an eight and a half year old boy who literally acted more like a toddler because of developmental delay, to homeschooling and all the anxiety I had with all the special needs we had, Jane stood by me 100%. As I've pursued ministry, Jane is right there in my corner cheering me on and is an important person in my life. She's mothered me in a way that my own mother couldn't because I'm on a journey that my mom didn't take. Even though Jane hasn't, she's a church person and I needed that to help me mature and grow in my faith as well. Jane agonized right alongside me as we waited five long years to bring home our daughters. I think at moments she was even more anxious than I was. This woman, with no children of her own, has mothered me with as much love and fervor as any mother possibly could. God provides us with the moms we need at the very time we need them. Sometimes the moms we have are terrific, but they're just ill-equipped for the next part of our personal journey. Sometimes the moms we need must be of the same generation as we are even, because they can better understand our circumstances and life experiences and our particular struggles. Yes, great mothering can come from our best friends, our siblings, our contemporaries, people we don't always view as mother because they're not older than us. But sometimes moms come in unusual packages. Yes, even male. We all would like to place men in sort of the father container. 
but all of us, both male and female, have traits of each gender. And sometimes men are called upon to tap their softer selves, their more feminine qualities, in order to be good fathers. Mother may usually be associated with a particular gender, but the act of mothering itself doesn't have to be. I have had male bosses who were deeply nurturing and helpful to me in my life. I have witnessed, witnessed my own husband tenderly caring for our children and then sometimes pulling a dad joke. And I have raised sons who have even mothered me a time or two. That's a unique blessing itself. In preparation for this sermon, I did something that seemed a little silly. And that was I looked up the definitions for mothering and fathering. Mothering, as described in the dictionary, is exactly how we would expect it to sound. It is relating or characteristic of a mother, especially in being caring, protective, and kind. Interestingly, fathering, as described in the dictionary, is simply to become the father of a child by making a woman pregnant. What an incredibly incomplete description of fathering that I found in not one, not two, but three different dictionaries. Many of us have been fortunate enough to have experienced fathering at some time, as something far more involved than simply procreation. So could it be that when fathers act as engaged and loving, just like mothers do, that they're doing exactly as God does in our life? That God, in our scripture passage in Isaiah, states that God will comfort us as a mother Good mothering doesn't always come from a gender. It comes from the heart. It comes from God, and it often comes in the form of a male. And that, my friends, means that none of us gets off the hook on Mother's Day. If God could mother us, then men can mother us as well. So men, you're stuck mothering too. Mothers abound, whether they are biologically connected to us or not. It means very little. We have a responsibility, a scriptural call, in fact, to mother the motherless, to care for the orphans of the world. In fact, this is specifically mentioned 24 times in the Bible. We all have a responsibility to mother others, and it doesn't matter whether we're a male or female, of childbearing age or a senior citizen, there is always someone around you who needs a little bit of mothering, a little special attention, a little nurturing, Maybe it's the older man alone at church who needs a little family and a home-cooked meal once in a while. Maybe it's the teen girl whose own relationship with her mom is at that totally awkward, uncomfortable stage at the moment, and she needs a gentle presence to help her through this awkward time of her life. Maybe it's the middle-aged man who is feeling stagnant in his life and unseen and could use a cheerleader to see things in him that others do not. Mothering is messy. It's complicated, and I guarantee you, none of us have perfect mothers, nor will we ever offer perfect mothering. It's kind of impossible. But it's clearly a role that God assigns to all of us, even when we perform it imperfectly. All of us are called to mother. Being a mom in the traditional sense isn't enough to consider just on Mother's Day. Many of us have mommy issues, and they're for all kinds of reasons. But that's just what life is like. It's messy, it's never clean. The idea of mothering can be both messy and beautiful at the same time, if we don't limit it. If we can just be open to being both mothered and mothering in very unusual ways. Amen. Please pray with me. Loving and gracious God, on this Mother's Day, we lift up all of those who are mothers for the new ones who endure sleepless nights with infants in arms, for the busy ones who juggle the pressures of home and family life, for the steadfast ones who nurture and care for our special vulnerable children, for the patient ones who always seek to forgive and engage with their preteens, for the persistent ones who cleverly find new ways to connect with their many adults, for the mother aunts who step in to cradle and care for nieces and nephews, for all grandmas who love and support their precious grandchildren, for all those mother figures that are called to gather and care for all of those that they encounter. 
for the Sunday moms who care for our children and help lead them and be examples in faith. For all of those who give far beyond their own resources, who overcome disability to cherish and to love. Thank you, Lord, for all our beautiful mothers. Help us to support them and keep them in our prayers. And as we pray for all of them this day, O oh God, we pray as well for those in our congregation who are struggling. Particularly today, we lift up prayers for Jen, as this week she begins treatments for her cancer. We ask that you surround her with your healing love and light, and that you help her to know your presence through the love of all of us. Loving and gracious God in all times and all places, we lift our concerns to you, and we know without even asking that you hear the prayers of your people. Amen. Shine upon you and be gracious.